Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to your 4 to 5. I'm Eric Chilton, joined by Tahitia Moyes and Maddie Gardner. We are ready to roll today. It's Friday. It's it Friday. Friday. This is our first full week of the 4 to 5. Job, Can guys. you believe it? <laughs> we made it. Yeah, we did. <laughs> so this is a new news show. If you are just tuning in for the first time, that gets you connected to the world around you. Yes, and during our breaks, we are going to keep that conversation going. We are live on Facebook and on YouTube. So use our hashtag 4 to 5 and let's see what you're talking about this right. Friday afternoon. Let's also get you caught up. Here's your four to five roundup. Another shooting at a U.S. Naval Air Station. Several people are dead after that shooter opened fire in Pensacola, Florida this morning. More people are injured. On Wednesday, a shooter opened fire at a U.S. shipyard in Pearl Harbor. Robbers in a UPS truck led police on a high speed chase in Florida. Police say those robbers killed four people, including the UPS driver, before they stole that truck. This happened in Miami. Former Carolina Panthers coach Ron Rivera isn't quite done yet. At least that's what he pinned in a thank you letter. He and his wife Stephanie says it was with heavy hearts, but many fond memories that they said goodbye to the Carolinas. Rivera also thanked former team owner Jerry Richardson for taking a chance on him. He and his wife signed the letter, keep pounding. All right, so this is the Greensboro story that you keep on clicking on. This video showing a postal worker wrapping a package before leaving it on the homeowner's doorstep. Now this happened just moments after a FedEx employee threw a package on the same doorstep. So even though there's the competition element to this story, at least there's some friendly thrown in the competition. Definitely thrown I see into what the competition. Did there. You see that one? It was thrown. <laughs> that wasn't even just <laughs> placed in a hard manner. That was thrown on there. And we were talking about this in the newsroom. I don't, that's not shocking to me. Like everyone not was surprised either. that the package was thrown. I said, I, I honestly expect the packages to be thrown. Right. I was surprised that someone took the time to wrap it for you. Did he just have the wrapping paper in his car just ready to go? I know. How is that happening? <laughs> Maybe that's his gift back to everyone just to <laughs> wrap it. There you go. Might work. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I still don't like the way he put the package up. It's almost like, like after he's thrown it as he's leaving. He doesn't care. That's he right. He doesn't care. Got to protect our packages. Let's talk about a forecast, <laughs> see what's going on. I got good stuff coming in the mail. I don't want you throwing it up there on the porch. I know. I digress. 38 degrees for the overnight low tonight. Talk about what you're supposed to, children. Mostly cloudy skies. You may see a stray shower or two here or there. We do see a little bit of that on the radar. It hasn't been anything major, but it is something we'll watch. 47 degrees will be the high temperature for tomorrow and uh, clouds and some sun. You know, this may be kind of a mixed bag tomorrow with sun and clouds uh, together. So we'll keep you posted on that one. No, no uh, issues as far as rain goes, though, for tomorrow. But notice how cool the high temperatures are. I mean, you're looking at uh, 47 degrees for the high, and our normal high should be in the mid-50s. For your weekend, upper 40s for highs, upper 20s for lows. Have a chance of rain, decent chance Monday, especially Tuesday. 50 and 70% for those two days will warm to 59. Sunny and cooler on Wednesday and 49, and we get even colder are heading into Thursday and into Friday. Look for lower 40s for highs and overnight lows around 30 degrees. This just into our newsroom. We learned Burlington police are now investigating a man accused of sexually assaulting kids in Guilford County. Richard Heath is now facing similar charges in Alamance County. Police say the allegations they are now looking into happened during church activities in Burlington. Many of you will take a ride share to your holiday parties or maybe to the airport, but how safe is that ride? There's been some local cases of assault happening in ride share cars. Remember in September in Kernersville, police there say an Uber driver picked up a woman, but instead of taking her to her destination, he took where, her somewhere else and then he sexually assaulted her. And then last month in Boone, a woman claimed a man assaulted her after she mistook his car for her Uber. And in Charlotte, police say an Uber driver was sexually assaulted after she picked up a man in July. But this is not just happening in North Carolina. It is a nationwide problem. In fact, Uber released a report today that shows more than 3000 people were sexually assaulted in a ride share last year. Now they point out there were more than 3 million Uber trips each day in 2018 and 99.9% .9 of them ended safely. Still, the number of reported rapes increased from 229 in 2017 to 235 last year. So did the number of non-consensual touching and kissing. 
Not all of these cases involved riders assaulted. In some instances, the Uber driver was the victim. Now, Uber says they have worked to improve safety this year, especially after a college student in South Carolina was murdered when she got into a car thinking it was her Uber. You will soon be able to text 911 from the Uber app during the ride, and it will send authorities your location as well as the make, the model, and the license plate number of the driver's car that you're inside. Uber also rolled out a new on-trip reporting tool that lets riders submit non-emergency safety issues through the Uber app to the company. And Maddie, it's really not just Uber that you have to worry about. Right. You also have to worry about Lyft. We are getting some reports there of some sexual assaults happening there and some safety features being put in place as well. Uh, there are some people that are filing some lawsuits against the rideshare company over sexual misconduct or rape by drivers. So because of that, Lyft rolled out an in-app 911 feature as well. They also partner with a sexual assault nonprofit to create mandatory safety exercises for driver applicants. All right, so let's get away from some of the heavier side of this with uh, ride sharing. We're joined by our social guru here, Brian Bennett. Absolutely. And, yep, look, up close. And <laughs> um, we're talking about how many people actually use these ride share services, Brian. So what kind of numbers are we talking about? Here? Well, in uh, 2018, 36% of people were using uh, ride sharing services. Uber reported over $11 billion in revenue. Lyft had over $2 billion in revenue. 25% of people surveyed said they use Uber once a month. Yeah, and we, we also heard that according to Business Insider, San Francisco, New York City, and San Jose are the most popular cities for Uber or Lyft. Um, and so it's big. I mean, it's popular right. around the area, that's for sure. Did you have comments on this online? Or? Yeah, uh, we actually got comments from, this actually happened in St. Louis. A uh, Lyft driver actually uh, was charged with raping a woman in the back seat. Uh, and this was a very interesting comment. Jane says, just because a rapist background is clear, it doesn't mean he or she isn't a rapist. It just means they haven't been caught wow. yet. So this keeps happening because rapists see the perfect opportunity to have a pool of victims. Well, how about so, that? Yeah, something for all of us to think about, that's for sure, before absolutely. you use those ride-sharing uh, surveys. So uh, keep chatting about this online with us. All you have to do is use the hashtag. It's the word four, number two, word five, four, two, five, and we'll uh, keep this conversation going. All right, well, we are monitoring your comments on our Facebook page and on our YouTube stream. A lot of you talking about the holidays. Christmas is 19 days away. Goodness, I had to do a double take with that one. So where are you with your shopping? After the break, we'll tell you how much people are spending on average for the holidays. Plus, it is not just a time to spend, it's really a time to give back, right? So we'll introduce you to a triad man who drives seven hours, seven hours every year for a triad toy drive. We'll keep chatting during the break.
Welcome back to the 4 to 5. Make sure that you're following us on Facebook or YouTube, WFMY News 2's pages on both of those social platforms so we can uh, chat with you about these stories. I'm going to be honest with you. Every now and again we do a story and I'll head out to do something and then somebody or something completely changes a story. We went out to do a story on Toys for Tots and a local law firm that has been doing this for years, but we met a guy who completely changed the story and his story of coming out every single year and being the first person in line completely changed the day for us. Take a look. It was on his second tour of duty that he was killed and he had gotten a Purple Heart the first tour and then of course the second tour you know, he was killed roadside bomb. And he was your son? He was right? my son, yeah. But when Andrew was killed I'd be the first one to bring toys in the morning and uh, it's a tribute to, to him and uh, I guess you know you can never get enough tributes to somebody you love you know. It takes me six, six and a half hours to get here, but it's, it's just worth it. It's just uh, something I do. It's, a, it's an honor for me to come down here. And I have to get up pretty early because <laughs> I start at 7 o'clock. And usually at 7 o'clock, no one's showed up with toys yet, so I'm always safe. Janet Ward Black has been the mastermind behind this, and she said they've been doing this so long, they're seeing it come back home again. At least one of the volunteers here today was actually a Toys for Tot child when she was growing up. So she's saying, I helped pay back because of what this program meant to me when I was a little girl. Judging from the smiles around this place, this program isn't going anywhere anytime soon. And you can bet every year at 7 a.m., this man will be there. So we arrived out there, and by the way, uh, Ward Black Law, they, they've run this Toys for Tots event for 12 years. It'll be, it's going on now until 6 o'clock tonight, but they're still collecting gifts for another week or so at the office. But when we That's went awesome. out there, we thought, okay, well, let's get you know people donating the toys and yeah. all that. And then she goes, well, have you met this gentleman? And I said, no. And she goes, he's been here every year. He is the very first one in line every mm -hmm. single year. He does it in honor of his son, who was a Marine. You just heard that, who was killed in action. And um, he told me, he said, I moved away from Greensboro several years back, but I get up and drive six or seven hours from Maryland to be wow. the first person in line every I, I just loved his story. It's a, just a great legacy to keep on and especially right. in this season of giving you know just to see people pouring out their hearts and really going the extra mile the extra 500 miles yes, for him yes. to come here is just mm -hmm. marvelous. So true. It really is my favorite time of the year and it's not just because of December 25th and when we all get together as a family but the lead up to this I mean we see Toys for Tots and Stuff is Stocking our campaign here at News yeah. 2 and just the generosity of our community that never ceases to amend me. The triad is really such a giving place. Right, right. And there are so many ways to give this time of year as well. Yes, yeah, so we asked you on Facebook. We said, how will you give back during the holiday season? Yep. So folks commenting on social media, of course, Brian Bennett checking in with us right now. What are they saying, BB? Yeah, our viewers are definitely going to be giving back for the holidays. Uh, Miss Mitchell says, I always give to the Salvation Army Red Kettles as well as our office does some sort of donation to the homeless or toys for tots. So thank you, Ms. Mitchell. Uh, Angela says, I love angel trees and helping to get special toys or things for kids in need. I wasn't able to read her whole comment, but this is one that I absolutely love. Uh, Phyllis says, I give to families that need a 20 once in a while and toys for tights as well. So, you know, I love how she put the little once in a while because sometimes you do have to cap it, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, really he do. brings out the honesty yeah. and all. Yeah. <laughs> that's so true. Well, you know, this is the most wonderful time of the year. And like you said, those 20s, they will be shelling out. So sometimes it's not so wonderful for your right. wallet when that's it comes sure. time to buying gifts for people. So our question of the day for you is, how much do you plan to spend on Christmas shopping? Did you know this? The average American will spend $976. Mm -hmm. Wowee. Okay, so here are your choices. Between five to uh, five hundred to one thousand dollars, you have one hundred to five hundred dollars, less than a hundred, and for some people the option there, no budget at all. That's uh Luckily, if you can do that, I yeah. don't know if that's good or bad. Well, right. and I'm not sure that you could take that two ways. No exactly. budget means I'm not buying any presents this year, or it means that I'm spending everything I want. So I don't True. know. True. And I'll check it at the end of the year right, to see right. how much I actually spent. So this year's average spending is projected to be about $992, which is down a little bit from last year. Yeah, so keep weighing in on WFMY.com slash vote now. Now, by the way, I asked people on my Facebook page how they save money during the holidays, right? Because you see that number and you think, I'm not 
not spending near $1,000 on Christmas gifts. Now, some people, well, we'll check in on this in a bit, but some people are saying they only buy gifts for the kids. Okay. Oh, Have you yeah, ever yeah. heard of anything like that? Well, my family, uh, my like brothers and sisters, and that we're we're such a big family that we decided years ago we're just we we, we can't buy each other. Or it's a lot of you know a lot of gifts. Right. So we just take care of our own every year, and then we get together to see each other. That's yeah. kind of that's our gift. I love that. Fast. And I know some families they do a family vacation instead that's of fun. gifts. It's not always jumping on a plane and going to Tahiti or something right. like that. It's maybe just driving a state over and doing something together as a family. Or in my case, it's never being in Tahiti. <laughs> there you I would go. love to go. <laughs> Never been. You're not taking the Chilton party Never to the been. islands? Do what? Take them all? Oh, yeah. no. It, I'd have to sell the house to take all my kids oh, and my no. wife. <laughs> to go that far. It's too much. Um, all right. Are we going to take a short break right now? I believe that's what we're going to do. Is that correct? Yes, yeah, do we're it. We're coming right back. <laughs> All right, ladies, I have a question for you. When was the last time you cleaned out your makeup bag? If I'm being honest, I can't remember, but the thing is you really probably should. And while you're at it, you should throw away your old makeup. Here's why. New research from Aston University in England found that nine out of 10 items they tested were contaminated with life-threatening superbugs. We're talking things like E. coli and staph. So the owners of the tested products admitted they didn't wash items, even even after they dropped them on the floor. And I don't really do that always either. I know it's a little gross. Well, owners also admitted to keeping products far past the expiration date. But researchers say the biggest culprit is your beauty blender or your makeup sponge. They found 93% of them had never been cleaned. So all that bacteria on your brushes and on your sponges will then transfer to your makeup bag. And I know this sounds very gross, but the problem is here, it's not just the stuff you have at home that you have to worry about. No. You also have to worry about what you're trying on right. at the stores as well. Absolutely. So we're in Sephora or Ulta or maybe at the drugstore. We're all yeah. the time buying new makeup. Yep. I want to swatch good, it. Or we try to at least. Yeah, you want to test it out. Right. right. But you shouldn't do that because those things are nasty as well. Our sister station in Charlotte took a closer look at this and they found that you might want to stop using them. The results revealed E. coli, MRSA, even herpes in those makeup testers at the stores. Ugh. The worst culprits from the samples were the eyeshadows and the lips. 
lipstick. So just avoid those at all costs. But doctors say you really shouldn't use them at all unless you can confirm with absolute certainty that you are the first person to try out that product. All right, so Tahitia and I, we brought our makeup bags up here. Yeah, I, I'm sorry to say this is my makeup bag. I honestly don't even know when I got this. It's a couple years old, and I'm being really real with you guys because we talked about the beauty blenders oh, no. being really dirty. This is my beauty blender, and this is actually like two weeks. Right. And it looks it's caked on. It's mostly makeup, though. It's yeah. mostly makeup, yeah. but so I, will I will say, say I, I put it somewhere, and yeah. I, that's germs. So my beauty blender is in here. Okay, I need um, one of those. I, if we're doing that. Well, it's, I don't want it to get nasty yeah, in there. So geez. it is dirty as well. However, I have found that if you just put this in a cup of hot water with some dish soap and you warm it in the microwave, it cleans it out really well yeah. and it can kill some of those germs. Um, but yes, I need to do a deep cleanse of right. this now and that story really makes me want to do that. Yeah. Chilton? Should I show you? Yeah. Yeah, let's see. Ain't no bag. <laughs> That's all there is. One little tiny thing. I don't even know how long this thing's been. I know. Yeah, we all need a I'm replacement. For you. We all need Here. a replacement. You know, I asked people on my Facebook page, you know, what do you do with your makeup bag? Do you clean it? Do you clean your brushes? How often do you clean it? Brian Bennett, you've been keeping a track of those comments. What yeah, have people absolutely. been saying? Yeah, yeah. Your makeup looks great, by the way. Oh, thank you. Uh, all natural? This is all natural. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, let's jump right into the comments. Uh, Michelle clearly has all the answer she says I clean my brushes once a week my bag often because of bacteria then on the other end of that Sharon says yikes I better get to cleaning <laughs> and then Patricia ends it this is actually Tahitia's mother she says when my bag is dirty I throw it away and replace it and buy a new one. well she needs to do that for you yeah Tahitia. mom That's you didn't right. teach me right then if I'm not doing it I need to take a page out of her book and all those ladies books that really want to change their bag okay so. chat with us on our Facebook page or the YouTube live good thing we have these here because this it might be time for a touch-up especially yeah, when you look, need some more blush when you're my age it's high yeah. death not high death Here's some concealer. don't forget that yeah we'll be back stay there
All right, everyone, I want you to think about this. In 2017, there were more than 690,000 children in foster care all around the U.S. And when you take a look at some of the numbers in North Carolina, 11,000 of those kids were right here. That's why this little boy story who we're about to introduce you to uh, will warm your heart despite the sad statistics. We began the school year as a family. A big family. Family doesn't have to be DNA. Family is support and love. With an even bigger heart. My name is Damon and Michael is my best friend. Michael Orlando Clark Jr. Oh, oh. He is a very active and silly, silly kindergartner. <laughs> Invited his entire class. My name is Lady Knight of my book. To watch this moment. It is ordered, Michael that your forever mom and dad will be David Andrew Eaton and Andrea Louise Melvin. And cheer him on. One, two, three. Sometimes their journeys have been very long. They've included miracle and change for the children and family and incredible community support as you were able to see today in Michael's adoption hearing with his whole kindergarten class and school being here to say we love you, we support you, and we'll be here not only today but in all the years in the future. It's safe to assume how Michael feels. Oh, we've been working with Catholic Charities and the workers there have just been amazing. They, I love my daddy. They, wow. I <laughs> love my daddy so much. This is just too much. This is just too much. Um, yeah, it's it's been amazing, obviously, how supportive they've all been. I love been. my daddy too much. You love him too much? <laughs> Look at I'm that. tearing up just watching that. Oh, my God. That's so awesome. cute. I saw that first thing this morning, and it just set my day in the right way. I love that video, and he's adorable. And the fact that, you know, he just kept saying, I love my daddy. I, I know. Mean, I, if that doesn't warm your heart and that smile of his, that smile of gold, oh, my. Oh my. thing ever. A lot of people saying they love that story on our Facebook yes. page. We want to keep chatting with you during the break. We're also live on YouTube. We'll see you after this. Oh, hi. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hey, George. George, spicy. <laughs> yes, I can. Hello. Yes, I can hear you, director, talking in my ear. Yes, mic check. One, two, three. Hey. Uh-huh, ice cold milk and an Oreo cookie, they forever go together. Yes, I can hear you, Jeff. Yeah, mic check. One, two, three, four, four to five.
Welcome back to the 4 to 5. I'm Eric Chilton, joined by Maddie Gardner and Tahitian Moyes. We're here to have a good time today. Yes, a full week of the first yes. 4 to 5 show on WFMY News yes. 2. And you're an inaugural member. Welcome to the club. We're here to make you feel informed and connected and really just let you in on our world. And while we're talking about being connected, we want you to make sure that you are commenting on our yes. Facebook page, commenting on our YouTube stream. If you are watching us, we want to see where you're watching from. In the meantime, we're going to get you caught up with some of the headlines of today with our four to five roundup. We are going to start things off here in Davidson County, where the sheriff's office there charged two people for trying to traffic a 14 year old girl. David Presnell Jr. and Brenda Freeman spoke to the Massachusetts girl online. They plan to bring her here to North Carolina and go actually to Massachusetts to pick her up to do that. Search warrant shows that they also spoke to other kids, some as young as eight. In some other news, the measles epidemic on the Pacific Island nation of Samoa is really going on there. 4,300 people infected there. The prime minister declared a state of emergency. Vaccinations are now mandatory and more than 20,000 people have been vaccinated in just the last two days alone. If you walk around in that country, there are red flags that are hanging outside of the homes of people there still in need of the vaccine as a sign. Nearly 60 children have died since October and schools and public areas are now shut down until everyone is vaccinated. The World Health Organization says the measles infected 10 million people worldwide last year. Back here in the triad, we are getting some new pictures of damage at some Guilford County schools. You're taking a look at photos at Caesar Elementary and Jackson Middle. You can see rusting walls, cracked floors, peeling baseboards and deteriorated lockers, among some other things that you are seeing. Cone Elementary is scheduled to close. Faust Elementary, Jackson Middle, Joyner Elementary and Page High could be demolished or rebuilt under a recently introduced $2 billion master plan. All of that, though, hinging on if it's approved. High Point native and retired NFL player is taking care of children in his hometown. William Hayes bought 52 winter coats and donated them to Fairview Elementary students. If you remember, Hayes played for the Miami Dolphins. He also played college sports at Winston-Salem State. All right, we're looking at a forecast, and uh, in case you didn't know, we've got a couple of showers here or there out and about, and the uh, radar showing that across the area and also really across the region as well. A lot of this very, very light in nature, so you may see just a sprinkle or a light shower, and it's so sporadic, it's really hit or miss. The end of this, you can see, is uh, back to the west of us, so we still have a little ways to deal with that. So we'll look for that heading into the evening tonight, and your seven-day forecast looking like this. Your weekend is a little chilly here. Upper 40s for high Saturday, Sunday. The difference, probably a few extra extra cloud Saturday. You'll see the sun, but it'll peak in and out Sunday a 20% chance of a shower, a high of 49. Now the, the rainy days are Monday and Tuesday as we see those going to a 50% uh, and a 70% for those two, but highs warm 52 Monday and close to 60 by Tuesday. Get cold again in the 40s for highs Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Wednesday, sunshine, Thursday, partly cloudy, a high of only 42 and lows right around 30 degrees. Friday, a 30% chance of a shower and a cooler high of 43. All right, so if you've been doing some Christmas shopping, you might have shopped at some small businesses in Greensboro or High Point. Well, that area was recently named the best place in the nation to start a small business. That's by a company called Zen Business. That organization looked at the 100 most populous areas in the United States. So how did they come to this conclusion? It's good news for us. The study used 10 data points that indicate a business's likelihood of success, including cost of operation, workforce availability, taxes, and the survival rate for existing businesses. Pretty cool stuff there. Yeah. And the study really seemed like it was right on the money because I chatted with some downtown businesses today and the owner of Scuppernong Books totally agrees with this. I think Greensboro is in this nice little space between uh, growth and too much growth, right? Where it becomes uh, unaffordable, um, impossible for someone to sort of fit in in a small business manner to uh, a growing downtown. So there is a sweet spot and I think we're in that kind of sweet spot. All right, before you get your weekend started, it's Friday, in case you missed it. Our digital guru, Brian Bennett, has the five things you need to check out around the triad. Here we go again. I hope you had a tremendous week, but you know what? Now it's time for the very best part. So many things to do, so many things to see. Here's five things to do in the triad. 
this weekend. Up first, we're getting in the Christmas spirit at the Greensboro Festival of Lights. Enjoy Christmas carols, the lighting of the community tree in Center City Park, and more. Have you gotten your photo with Santa? Well, now is the time. Get your photo op opportunity at Four Seasons Town Center this weekend. Then you don't want to miss the Greensboro Holiday Parade. Enjoy floats, bands, and so much more. Oh yeah, we can't forget about our WFNY News 2 personalities. Hey, that's me! And who's ready for hoops? Catch NC State taking on Wake Forest at the Lawrence Joel Veterans Memorial Coliseum on Saturday. And finally, if one parade wasn't enough, how about two? You can catch the Winston-Salem JC's Holiday Parade Saturday afternoon in downtown Winston-Salem. Well, there you have it. Plenty of fun to go around. There's no way you could possibly go wrong. Just choose an event. All you have to do is pick. As always, make sure you log on to WFNYNews2.com for more details and specifics pertaining to these events. I love Festival Lights. One of my yeah. favorites. Yeah, love it. Just downtown is yeah. going to be busy tonight. <laughs> Don't forget, I think there aren't there specials downtown? Like you can walk the streets and get specials at all the oh, stores. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Small Very businesses cool. are open. Parades this weekend. Parades. Greensboro, Winston-Salem. I'm in Franklinville tomorrow morning. Their parade. So, well, wh wherever you go, you're going to need a bundle up because yeah. it's going to be a little bit cold high, this you? weekend. Yes. Hmm. Yeah, so there are some other things you can do this weekend as well. We want to highlight one other thing you can do. You can take a tour through Sunset Hills in that neighborhood there. Neighbors have their Christmas balls up ready for families to see, and it is going to be a great time there. If you haven't done it before, I highly suggest you go bring a friend, maybe take some hot chocolate with you while you're driving. Fresh fruit. Mm -hmm. It's not processed. It's a good source of vitamins and minerals. Sure, take one, Chilton. <laughs> hey, all of these are basically a no if you are on the keto diet. Hmm. It seems counterintuitive, doesn't it? But there's a lot of diets out there. Yeah. Absolutely. I've done the keto and do it here and there, mm -hmm. and that's what I miss the most. Uh, is the fruit. It, it is, yes. Okay, so keto, if you at home have not heard of this before, uh, it is a diet that was designed to help people with epilepsy, hmm. and it actually lessens their seizures and it helps their brain work as well. And so we've got a graphic there for you that kind of goes through each one of those key points. So the question is, because it's good for them, is it also safe for people without that condition? It became very popular. I mean, we have folks here at News mm -hmm. 2 doing it. Um, so is it, if it's okay for right. somebody, should it be okay for everybody? Well, I guess it's one thing to talk to the doctor because mm. it's not a one size fits, fits all. all. No, Absolutely. it's not. So we're going to verify the safety of the diet uh, for the everyday person that's coming up at 540. Now, since I'm all up <laughs> in your space about what you eat and what you don't eat, now I'm going to ask you, how do you people spend your money? Okay, so I've given you <laughs> oh, little boy. points there. Okay. Oh, okay. And what I want to know for each one of these is, are you a pay the credit cards off every month person? Mm. Or are you a, hey, I am keeping a balance and I'm working on it? Okay. Pay so, it off monthly? So me, pay it off. ask you if I do pay it off usually monthly, but sometimes there may be 100 bucks on there and it takes me to the next month to pay it off. But I try to pay mm -hmm. it off all the time. So is that still keep a balance? That's keep a balance. Keep okay. a balance. Right. Keep a balance. Pay it off monthly. Okay. I want to give you this. The average credit card user debt depends on how you measure it, but this is two key points. 6500 was the average balance on credit cards yes. at the end of 2018. Wow. When you're talking store credit card balances, you're looking at like $1,900 on average. One of the ways to help you pay that off is a balance transfer. You transfer your balance to a lower percent credit card or 0%. Have any of you ever done that it's, to save money? It's so crazy that this is what you're talking about because I was having a conversation with someone this morning about, about trying to figure out, do I want a balance transfer or do mm. I want to try to figure out what interest would be over that same period of time? Okay, so this is what we're going to be talking to you about and to want to know because we're going to tell you how do you calculate Thank a you. balance transfer? Is it worth it because there's a fee associated with every balance transfer and how can you use your really good credit score to maybe negotiate that fee down I I'm couldn't watching. live my life without Tanya Rivera <laughs> I'm telling you she makes me smarter every day <laughs> all right let's make you smarter about the traffic conditions throughout the triad this is a look at I-73 south at exit 102 you know that's Windover Avenue and you can see cars moving right along ready to get the weekend started we're ready to get the weekend started too. But before that, we want to chat with you on Facebook and on our YouTube pages. Make sure you're leaving those comments or you can use our hashtag 4 to 5. We'll keep chatting through the break.
Hi there, Jeffrey. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hello, one, two, three. Thank you, sir. Hello and welcome back to the four to five. You know, we're a new show. We're here to keep you informed, but my favorite part, we're connected to everybody. So we're here with Brian Bennett checking in on the social media yep. action. What are Absolutely. people saying? Uh, so right now we're just sc scrolling through the live feed. Right. Uh, Homer says, enjoying the news four to five. So he's enjoying the show. Thank you, Thank Homer. You. Uh, Thanks for watching. David's excited for the parade uh, coming up this weekend. Yes. He says, who's ready for the Greensboro Christmas parade? Always a great time. Yeah, we'll be <laughs> handing out some candy. There will be a large group of WFMI, WFMY News 2 people there. So if you have a favorite, they'll probably be out there. You wave to us and we'd love to see you. <laughs> and Donna loved your story uh, about Mayberry yesterday. She says, She's also from She's area from Mount well. Airy. It's a great place to be. I had the best day yesterday. I was thinking about it before I went to bed last night, and it's just one of those days. I, I really think I'm going to remember that one forever. Got to be live in my hometown. Got to light up the Christmas tree. <laughs> Got so to thank see you, Mom. Donna. Always to put great Mom on to the see news Mama. Too. Always. All right, so keep talking online. That's why Brian is here. He's making sure we know what's going on. But it's not just us talking. Tim Buckley is talking online too. Who told him he could do that? I know. What? He wasn't allowed. We let him out of his cage twice a year. Yesterday was <laughs> one of the days. All right, Tim Buckley saw a tweet on Twitter and it's about snow. And I gotta tell you, it's pretty accurate here. Take a look. Tony says that snow seems so romantic until you have to scrape it off your car, mm -hmm. shovel it off the driveway or walk through it. Tim Buckley tweeted, yes, snow is bad for adults with responsibilities, but it's always wonderful for the kids. And I can hmm. tell you it's wonderful until maybe they have to shovel the snow. Then they don't really love it quite as much. You know, I really wasn't a play in the snow kind of gal. No. I grew up in Massachusetts, so there was just too snow. much of it. And you know what? I was inside with the hot chocolate, looking at my dad outside with the snow blower. Doing a great job, Yeah, dad. you're doing, doing a great, great job. But I, I didn't bug them to go sledding or anything like that, because I just really wasn't into it. So. I did not like the snow. You know, we didn't get a lot here, really growing yeah, up. We had a few big much. storms, but um, I really hated to miss school. I was Maddie really is sad. such a straight look at Tasia's face. That look, Tasia. Like, do that again. Do it, do it again. And that's why all of my teachers still love me and are watching right now. Hello. You did love school. <laughs> so you would have been like this boy. There's a boy we're about to show you. He's shoveling because he wants to get to school. 
I'm just making it up, but he's shoveling. Okay? <laughs> he's shoveling. He doesn't really want to shovel. Here's Look at the him. thing. Look at he's him. He's angry shoveling. No, he's angry shoveling. The opposite of what Maddie would be doing, really. Look, so look, he, look, look. Look. he starts to get angry. Look at him. And then he just falls over. There was like eight inches look of him. snow in his driveway. He was not having it. Not having it. I'll I bet you him. it was one of those situations where the parents said, you want to shovel off the driveway? He goes, sure. And then he starts doing it and he realizes why nobody wants to do it. He was angry. That is so funny. I feel for that kid. I really love him. I know. You live in Colorado, like, so you better get used to I it. I mean, just the ang that's how I fall my laundry. Like, I don't want to do this, but I have to do it anyway. <laughs> he was so mad. Yeah. Okay, but if you want your mail, especially in December, busy time of year for mail, you get the Christmas cards and the packages, you need to shovel your driveway, right? So the, the Postal Service, they say it's the busiest time of year, and winter weather could sometimes make it worse. Of course, we had snow in December last year. Knock on all the wood. Don't bring it here this year. But I did talk to the postmaster in Greensboro about making sure you get your letters and your packages. We're not going to put our employees into an unsafe situation. So, you know, we do ask our customers to help us when it's bad weather. You know, anything they can do to kind of help the approach on their driveways to be cleared as early as possible. That way it can help us to affect delivery. But we're going to do everything we can to get the packages delivered, even through bad weather. All right, well, none of that mentioned in our seven-day forecast. As you uh, take a look at this, 47 and 49. It will be chilly this weekend. The morning low on Sunday is 28, so get ready for that. But 50% chance of rain Monday, 70% Tuesday. Uh, the two really only rainy days of the week. 52 will be the high on Monday. Now, we build temperature-wise after dropping for the weekend. We go back close to 60 as we head into Tuesday. But by Wednesday, it's sunny and cooler at 49. Then we see partly cloudy skies, kind of a mixed bag of sun and clouds on Thursday. A cooler high again of 42. Our low at 30 Friday morning and a high temperature of 43. On Friday, only a 30% chance of a shower. And right now, we're talking about just a shower in that, not any frozen treats so on that day. That's for sure. There is nothing treat about I that. Know, I agree. No treat. <laughs> All right, question of the day for you. How much do you plan to spend this year on Christmas shopping? Yeah, we've been asking you that throughout the show. Are you one of the average people who will spend about $976? But you see your options there. 500 to 1,000, 100 to 500, less than 1,000, no budget. Right now, 500 to 1,000 is what people are guessing as what they're going to spend, and that's pretty average. That's so. where I am, I would say. I like that, but seeing that story just makes me want to know how to save money. So that's what I ask people on my Facebook page, and people are saying spend it on a family experience. There I go. think that's a great idea. That is a great. That's what you said. Yeah, that's what that. I yeah. said. I, I really don't want gifts at this point. I just want to spend time with the people that I love, doing something that we will all enjoy. Take a picture, can look at the picture, think back on the memories. Love it, it is. Yeah time with the family is the most valuable yeah. thing there is. Yeah, that's for sure. All right, can we check in with Brian? Do we have that ability should. here to see what's going on socially? <laughs> Going on socially, uh, actually <laughs> about what you were just talking about, Maddie, uh, what are people spending money on this year? And they're really just focusing on the kids, like you said, and just mm -hmm. togetherness, that family. Uh, Benita says, I wish I knew how to curb my spending. In truth, no one in my family really needs anything, but I always try to get each one something special, so. That's awesome. Yeah, I really need to buckle down on the Christmas shopping. I did purchase two gifts today. Oh, very good, so nice. So check, check. There you go. Two more to go. It's hard to shop for the brother-in-law and the dad. I, so it's always hard guys, to shop for the men. What, I, what should I, we get for the men in our lives? Tech. It's tech. all tech, I'm tech. telling you. Anything that's gadgety, techy, or whatever, guys always love it. Am I right, Brian says no, yes? No, you're absolutely right. Yes, I think that's always the easy out. If you just go, literally, if you went to Best Buy and said, what's the item of the year? Okay. That's all you got to so, do. So no I'll write socks. write that down. No, no socks. <laughs> no socks. No got socks. It. Tech for yeah. boys. <laughs> got it. It's right here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready to go. <laughs> we are good to go with that one. Very good. All right, we're going to take a short break and we'll be right back in just a minute. Another check of your forecast coming up.
Welcome back to your Fortify, the new show built to keep you informed, but really connected. Yeah, and a lot of you have been talking with us online since we started talking about makeup and how oh, often yes. do you clean your bag? Do you clean it at all? And I was really real with you guys and I showed you how dirty <laughs> my makeup bag was and I am ashamed. Don't I think ashamed. I'm gonna go get a new one. You're not alone. I'm not I'm alone. With you. I'm right here. No. <laughs> uh, all right, we want to check in with our digital expert, Brian Bennett, though, because he's reading the comments that you are leaving <laughs> about our dirty makeup bags. Yes, Ew. I am. Uh, I don't really have much to contribute to these conversations, <laughs> yeah. but um, you know I'm you, baby. social media absolutely <laughs> does. Michelle says, I don't own a makeup bag. I do wear makeup, just not often enough to justify lugging it around. Gotcha. So, that's the point. Uh, let's find out one more. Um, Let's see. Rosemary says, never, don't wear it, and don't recommend women who wear, I guess she's saying she doesn't recommend that women wear so much makeup that you actually have to take it with you on. <laughs> well, it's part going. of the job. Here. Right. Exactly. We, we have to bring it here. But so. on the weekends, clean face. And you a don't mask. Face I mask. I like to do it. Yeah, me and Eric, <laughs> clean face all the time. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Well, you have really faces. great skin, by yeah, the way. Yeah, I want to say that. You Lotion. 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 All right, so this weekend we're all going to clean our makeup brushes and our makeup yes. bags. Or That's get new plan. ones. Or I can just talk yeah. about a forecast. Yeah. Uh, let, let's show you that because we've got some showers out there out and about and uh, you know it's sporadic hit or miss. Will it ruin anything tonight? No, you should still be heading out to the Festival of Lights. You may see mist or drizzle or a light little sprinkle here or there. Again, I don't think it'll amount to much to ruin any events. That's for sure. Saturday, Sunday, it'll be chilly though. Partly cloudy to variably cloudy upper 40s for highs. We're looking at 50% chance of rain on Monday and a 70% chance on Tuesday with the high temperatures topping out at close to 60 degrees by Tuesday, Wednesday, sunshine and 49. And when you get to Thursday and Friday, it's cold, a mix of sun and clouds and 42 on Thursday, Friday, it's 43. That 30% chance of a shower right now, we're saying just a shower. I know we had talked about that's a little too far out to make the call, but for now we'll say just rain, no frozen issues. Overnight lows though, toward the beginning of, or the end of next week rather, will be right around 30 degrees. Coming up on WFMY News 2 at 5, have you heard this one? Call 112 if an unmarked car tries to pull you over and you're not sure if it's a real officer. A social media post is circulating around the triad suggesting you do just that. So should you go with your gut and call 911 first or that number on that post? Is it legit? We verify coming up on WFMY News 2 at 5. Hello, 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 hello. Hi, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. Great. Hi, Callie, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I am not wearing. Hello, Mike Tyke, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It says it on the director notes. Hey, check. director notes for H32 should have him doing a ring ring sound effect. Yep, he has it. Okay. Mm hmm. Mic check, three, two, one. Mic check, three, two, one. I just got my IFB. Mic check, mic check. Oh, 